Welcome back everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. In this video we're going to continue the best carry ammo series that I started a couple weeks ago. And I actually planned on um, testing the next batch of ammo today, but after I posted the last video, I had several of you guys ask me to rerun the exact same test and just add a layer of clothing uh, onto the ballistic shell. So that's what we're going to do today, we're going to test uh, all the same rounds in the same order, this time through a four layer heavy clothing test and I have uh, used this same heavy clothing test in the past but just in case you don't know, the clothing that I use is the same kit that the FBI uses. It is a thin cotton t-shirt layer, a thick cotton t-shirt layer, a layer of heavy fleece material, and a layer of denim. Now the gel blocks that I use as always are 20% clear ballistics gel. I have a new one in the front and an older one in the back to stop any of these bullets that over penetrate and end up in our second gel block. Now the premise of this video is basically to uh, test bullets in a shorter barrel gun. The reason for that is because most people don't carry um, full-size duty size pistols with long barrels. They carry you know subcompact single stacks, um, Glock 26s, stuff like that and they have shorter barrels and with a shorter barrel you get lower velocity most of the time and obviously that affects the way that the bullet performs. So the gun that we use is my Glock 43. This is a single stack subcompact 9mm. Uh, very small pistol with a very short barrel. And like I said, these are the types of guns that uh, most people carry. So. Like I said in the beginning, I planned on moving on to the next batch of ammo today, so uh, after we run the heavy clothing test, I will uh, start on the next batch of ammo, and I've had a lot of suggestions from you guys, so I'm probably going to have four or five parts to this video, so if, if the one that you suggested doesn't come up in part two or part three, it will be there eventually, and we will get to it. So I'm going to go ahead and set you guys up, and we will get started. Alright guys, so I got the heavy clothing layers taped to my ballistics gel, and uh, like I said, we're going to shoot the same bullets in the exact same order that we did in the first video. So the first round we're going to shoot is the 124 grain spear gold dot. Alright guys, so our gold dot went in towards the top of the ballistic shell, and you can see it had a nice wound channel um, for about the first half of the first gel block. Then it shrunk down a bit, continued traveling, left our first gel block, and stopped right there in our second gel block. Now when we shot this into bare ballistic shell, it stopped at 12 and a half inches, so it was back here somewhere. So obviously that clothing definitely affected the expansion and uh, the distance that it traveled in our ballistic shell, but it does look like it still expanded pretty well and went a couple inches into our second gel block. And the gold dot stopped right at about 18 inches. Alright guys, moving right along, the second bullet we're going to test is the 124 grain Federal Premium HST. Alright guys, so our HST went in right below our gold dot, and as you can see, a pretty similar size wound channel to the gold dot. Continued going down, left our first gel block, and I'm not sure if you can see that, but it stopped um, about halfway into our second gel block, so you can actually see that bullet there. And it did not completely enter the second gel block, but it did start to go into that second block. So we know that the HST stopped right at 16 inches into our ballistic shell. And in the bare ballistic shell test, it stopped at 11 and a half inches. So again, uh, the clothing is definitely affecting uh, both of these bullets so far. And not necessarily in a, in a negative way, but they are penetrating a little bit further. The HST also looks like it expanded as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that one out of there so that we can... Um, prevent any other bullets from hitting that one in our next few tests. Alright guys, next up 
we're shooting the 115 grain Hornady Critical Defense. And this bullet actually has a red uh, flex tip on the front of the bullet to help it perform better in heavy clothing tests and self-defense situations and stuff like that. So let's see how it does. All right guys, our critical defense is the one on the bottom there. It looks like it has a slightly smaller wound channel than the first two bullets did. It traveled down the gel block and stopped right there. It does look like it's completely expanded and this is actually the first bullet we've had stop in our first gel block. And the critical defense stopped at about 10 and a half inches. Um, you can see there that the wound channel does go about a quarter inch further, but it's still in between 10 and a half and 11 inches. And in the bear gel, um, I actually said that this bullet stopped at eight and a half inches. I had a few of you guys correct me on that and point out to me that the red insert that's in that bullet um, is actually where the bullet went to and then it bounced back a couple inches. So I remeasured it and it actually stopped at 10 and a half inches in the bear gel and it looks like it stopped pretty much in the exact same spot just did not bounce back this time. So the critical defense is so far the only bullet that has performed um, pretty much identical in the bear gel and the heavy clothing test. All right, the next bullet we're gonna shoot is the 124 grain plus P Hornady critical duty. This also has the Hornady flex tip um, in the front of this bullet, but uh, the critical duties from what I understand are designed more for uh, duty use and hard barrier penetration. So uh, let's see how it does in the heavy clothing test. All right, so our 124 grain critical duty is the one closest to us. Looks like it had a nice wound channel as well. Went down the gel block, expanded, and stopped right there. Uh, this one looks like it performed pretty similarly to uh, the way it did in bear gel. In bear gel, it stopped at 14 and a half inches, and it looks like it's gonna be uh, pretty much around that same spot through the heavy clothing test. All right, so the 124 grain critical duty stopped at about 15 inches into our first gel block so again a pretty similar result to the way it performed in bear gel and it looks like it expanded about the same as well now i will take all these bullets out when we're done and uh, show you guys what they look like and how they expanded but for now looks like it performed almost identical to the bear ballistic shell test that we did all right guys next up we're shooting the 135 grain one of the critical duty i actually just shot this one and it took a right hand turn and left our gel block. So this is the second attempt on the 135 grand critical duty. It's kind of a challenge to keep all these bullets in the gel block without um, them hitting each other or overlapping wound channels and stuff like that. So I'm trying my best, but that one was a little bit too far to the right and it turned and left our gel block. So Hornady critical duty, 135 grain, attempt number two. All right, so you can see on the very top of the gel block, that was the first 135 grand critical duty that I shot, and it left the gel block right there on the corner, as you can see, and I was not able to trap that bullet. So the second one that I shot is in the middle of the block right there. It's kind of hard to see because it's starting to get kind of crowded in there. Um, but the wound channel is pretty comparable to the rest of them. Went down the gel block and stopped right there, right above our 124 grain bullet. Now, in the bear gel, the 135 grain went 16 inches. Right here, the bullet itself is stopped at about 15 inches. But if you look, you can see that the wound channel, like you guys pointed out to me, is actually about an inch further than the bullet itself. So I'm assuming that it bounced back um, into the gel block and 
we're gonna go ahead and give this one 16 inches as well. But these Hornady bullets are starting to impress me because they are performing pretty much identical in the clothing test as they do in bear gel and all of the other ones are definitely performing a little bit different. Not bad, the Gold Dot and the HST both performed really well also and some of you guys might even prefer more penetration but they are performing differently and the Hornady bullets, the, the critical defense and the two critical duties are all performing pretty much identical to the way they did in the bear gel. Alright guys, the last bullet we're going to shoot is the 115 grain Remington UMC. This is definitely the most affordable bullet that we're going to shoot today. So let's see how it does in our heavy clothing test. Alright guys, the UMC is on the very bottom of the gel block. You can see that again, similar wound channel. All these bullets have uh, pretty similar wound channels. Continued traveling down our first gel block and just entered our second gel block. You can see that once again, it's kind of caught in between the two. Um, but it did enter our second gel block and stopped at about 17 inches. In the bear gel, the Remington UMC stopped at 14 inches. So there definitely is a difference from the bear gel to the heavy clothing, but it does look like it expanded and performed pretty well. Just traveled a couple inches further down the gel block. All right guys, so I'm just gonna quickly show you the bullets that I pulled out of the gel block. The first one here is our 124 grain gold dot and it did expand but it did not flatten out or expand to the diameter that gold dots usually do. Here I have the gold dot from the bear gel that we shot, and you can see that there's quite a big difference in both uh, the size of that bullet and how much that it flattened out. In the bear gel, it flattened out quite a bit more, and through the clothing it did not but obviously clothing does clog these hollow points and this isn't a bad thing uh, all these bullets performed well enough to use in my opinion I'm just showing you guys the results and that the clothing did affect the gold dot a little bit now the next one here is our 124 grain HST you can actually see clothing trapped in the cavity of that hollow point but the HST expanded a little bit more and uh, did flatten out a little bit more as well. Now here is the HST from the bear gel. You can see that it did not expand quite as much as it did in bear gel, but again, uh, performed well and nothing wrong with the HST. The next one is the 115 grain critical defense. Now the next three all had the red flex tip kind of smashed around the front of the bullet. So I went ahead and pulled that off so that we could uh, see the hollow point and the way that it expanded. So this one here is the critical defense. These Hornady's do not flatten out or expand like the other ones. They're just uh, not designed to do that, but it did expand um, really well. This here, is the critical defense from the bear gel. You can see that that one actually performed almost identical to the bear gel. So uh, those red inserts, the flex tips on these Hornady bullets uh, definitely do help and the critical defense did very well. The next one here is the 124 grain plus P critical duty. And again, not as much expansion and did not flatten out as much as the first two, but again, that's not what they're designed to do. And here is the 124 grain critical duty from the bear gel. And again, pretty much identical to uh, the bear gel when we shot it through the four layers of clothing. 
The next one here is 135 grain critical duty. Pretty much the same as 124 grain. The 124 grain I think flattens out a little bit more, uh, but the 135 grain usually uh, penetrates a little bit more. Not so much in the heavy clothing test, but uh, it did perform the way that it usually does in bear gel. And there is the bullet that I pulled out of the bear gel in our last video, and they're basically identical. Now the final bullet that we shot was the 115 grain Remington UMC and it performed well. It usually I think flattens out maybe a little bit more but it did perform very well and it impressed me. Now here is the UMC from the bear gel that I pulled out and you can see that it did flatten out quite a bit more in the bear gel than it did in the heavy clothing test. Alright guys, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, in the future, I'm probably going to do less rounds per video. Uh, six, I think, is too much. And, you know, it's kind of a challenge for me to space these bullets out enough to prevent overlapping wound channels or colliding with other bullets inside the gel. If you saw the first video, I did have a collision inside the gel. And I think if I, you know, brought it back to maybe four rounds per video, um, it'd be easier to prevent that. And you guys would be able to see the wound channels and the bullets uh, more clearly inside that gel. So I can't decide if I'm going to continue doing bear gel and heavy clothing for each batch of ammo. Let me know what you guys would rather see because I kind of like being able to see how bullets perform differently from bear gel to the heavy clothing test. I realize that the heavy clothing test is probably the more accurate test, but it is nice to know um, when you introduce barriers or clothing layers and stuff like that. Um, you know, how they perform differently. So I kind of like doing the bear gel first and then introducing the clothing second. But let me know what you guys would rather see. If you'd rather me skip the bear gel altogether and just do the clothing, we can do that as well. I don't like being repetitive in videos and that's one of the things that I didn't like about retesting all the same bullets. Um, I like to kind of surprise you guys a bit if I can and keep my videos interesting. So uh, I didn't really want to do the same six rounds again, but I understand where you guys are coming from and why you wanted to see the heavy clothing test. It's definitely a more accurate test. So. Um, just let me know what you guys would like to see, if you'd like for me to stick with the clothing only, or you'd like to see bear gel and clothing, and um, I'll make my decision based off that. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up for me. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.